Well, Tom, both of us are wearing considerably more clothes uh, than uh, we were when we last saw each other. Um, suggestion intended. Uh, how are you? Good, yeah. I've subbed out the bucket hat for a beanie, um, but still reveling in the memories of what was an amazing month out in Bermuda. Yeah, it certainly was. Um, very few of us knew exactly what to expect out of the World 10 Series. Um, how do you recall it? How do you remember it? What are, what are your thoughts on it all? Well, that's it, isn't it? We had no idea what we were stepping into. Um, obviously, it was, it was quite late in its conception in terms of um, it actually being an event that we we're all actually going to rock up to and play some rugby. Um, and I think it surpassed everyone's expectations. Everyone I've spoken to who was there uh, was amazed at, at how they managed to put on an event at late notice with so many people in such a big operation to such a high standard. Um, and everyone was thinking, when's the next one and when can we come back? Do you think it would have uh, alerted a few other you know, sporting properties, governing bodies perhaps, to, to look over the fence and, and see how these things could be done in, in such a tough time? Yeah, I think we spoke before the tournament about how something like this is going to be amazing in terms of um, just challenging people to see what can be done in the current climate with everything that's going on. How can you find solutions? How can you actually get around what we're doing, uh, what needs to be done? Um, so you can put on amazing spectacles. Uh, allow people to do what they love, playing rugby, um, and, and put something on that people love to watch. Yeah, and from an athlete's perspective, the chance to have got back into that, that environment, you were, you were touring with your mates again. You were getting on that plane, and then you were running around on the field out there. It must have, must have been great to be back. I know, it was something that I definitely didn't realise. That element of it, I didn't realise I'd missed as much as, as I, I kind of discovered midway through the trip. And um, the simple things, being on the bus rides on the way to the stadium, just hanging around the lads, like, the chats you have before training, before you're actually about to start doing some proper work. Um, it's not proper work, is it, let's be honest. <laughs> but yeah, the small things were really, really enjoyable to get back into it. And to be into that kind of regular training again with a squad was amazing. Um, and I think that that kind of collective feeling of gratitude for being back out on the field, back in the gym, back on the training pitch, uh, really created something special out there. Having had a taste of the product itself, of, of the World 10 series, what do you make of, of it as a game and, uh, and potentially the future of it? It was brilliant. It was brilliant. I mean, whatever game we're playing, we're probably going to love getting back out there. But I think having the extra challenge of a, of a different um, a different spectacle with different rules from what we're used to. Some of the stuff was obviously a big hit. The conversion jeopardy, one that everyone's talking about, which was great fun. Um, but just some of the gameplay, I think the way that teams as well tried to figure the game out as we went across the three weekends of play was, was really interesting. Um, and I think the quality went with it and, and is only going up as well from there. What was the experience like uh, facing a few of the bigger boys that uh, you might normally on the seventh circuit? Yeah, it was different prospects. First time I've come up against some genuine props in second rows for a while, um, which, was, which was good. And, and sometimes I met that challenge well and sometimes I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and there's definitely some rustiness out there. But I mean, it was just awesome having that challenge and it was something different. Um, great for me as a player personally to try and negotiate a, a pitch where there's more players and a little bit less space in terms of attack. And the different challenges of how to kind of break that game down, um, particularly with a team that we hadn't, um, had a lot of time to prepare so we spent the first kind of week or so really just trying to get to know each other understand how one another play uh, and tap into one another's strengths as well which I think we did pretty well for the Royals yeah very good he's repping the stash um, <laughs> and uh, Bermuda itself I mean obviously we all struggled on out there it was uh, it was a tough place to be but if it's to have its place on a, on a future tour for the World 10 series um, will you struggle to go back well, I think the boys' Instagrams have, have done a world of good for the, uh, for the Bermuda Travel Authority. Uh, maybe not for our relationships with people who were back here at the time. Um, definitely got a few messages asking us to shut down our Instagram accounts for those few weeks. No, but I think people genu were genuinely kind of pleased to see us enjoying ourselves, um, making the most of what, was an, what is an amazing place. Um, going around on the scooters is the best way to explore the island and stopping off and having swims in turquoise waters on deserted beaches um, really kind of added an extra layer to what was an unbelievable uh, month already. <laughs> yeah, that sounds so ridiculous when you say it, but uh, it is true. Um, what's next for you then? Uh, not really sure at the moment. Um, coming back and after getting three good weeks of, of rugby under my belt and obviously the training that went beforehand keen to kind of push on with the training and, and stay in half decent shape um, try and push into good shape um, and then and then a couple of other projects outside of rugby that I'll, I'll keep ticking over a few life changes moving house 
um, and expecting our first baby next year. So a few things to think about in the meantime. Oh, exciting. Well, congratulations with that. Um, Tooting's going to miss you, I'm fairly sure, as we, uh, <laughs> as, as we stand here. Um, and we don't know when the Sevens is going to return at this point. It's, uh, it's obviously a, a six months to a year that is still relatively unpredictable. But um, what do you expect over the course of the next few months and, and, and how excited will you be to get that chance to build towards Tokyo? Yeah, still really excited at the prospect. I think it's something that is always in the back of our mind and still was, to be honest, when we were out in Bermuda doing the tens. And I think the way the, the sevens boys showcased what they can do was, was as expected for me, but I think certainly surprised a few other people who aren't as familiar with it. Um, and the kind of more time goes on, the closer we get to hopefully returning to some sevens tournaments next year, uh, the more excited we get, I think. Um, and there's a few things obviously still to iron out and um, but I think we're still optimistic that things are going to fall into place and that we'll be back doing what we love on the world circuit and then, and then preparing for, for Tokyo when it comes around next year. And if there's room for you to step back into a World 10 Series in 2021, perhaps post-Tokyo, would that be an invitation you'd take up? Oh, just let me know when and where, for sure. Excellent. As long as I can represent the Royals. <laughs> we'll do our best. We'll speak to the right people. <laughs> Tom, thanks very much for your time. Cheers.